What's going on guys? Apathetic here with all your tips, recommendations, and everything in between to make sure you are set up for success in the Crucible. And today we are focusing on tips for freelance survival and helping our friends who like to fly solo to reach 2100 or 5500 this season. So let's get into it. Tip number one is a focus on the basics. So often when we analyze our gameplay, we are focused on all the wrong things. We are focused on getting the perfect role on our weapons, getting the perfect stat rolls or mods for our armor, and all that is good and great, and having god roll weapons and armor and a nice build that fits our playstyle all helps the ultimate goal of winning more games. But even if you have the best weapons, the perfect armor and build, at the end of the day, that will never outshine someone who has none of those things, but has the basics down. The basics being aim and movement. You have to focus on improving and really taking a hard look at how well you perform in these two areas. For aim, sometimes it boils down to just needing to warm up a little bit first, or depending on whether you're on console or PC, your sensitivity or other settings may be too high or low and it's negatively impacting your aim. For movement, it could be you're not sliding enough or maybe you're ADSing down a hallway too long. It could be your movement uh, when you're in a gunfight is almost non-existent so you don't have really good strafe. All these things will hold you back if you do not solidify them. You can build a house, you cannot build a house without building the foundation first and movement and aim are your foundation. Now, I can't make this video all about how to improve your aim and movement, but I do have other videos to support you guys with those things. So check the link, the links below if you're looking to improve your aim or movement. I'll have a playlist that you guys can use that has all my competitive tips in there for you. Tip two is understanding your teammates. And I know guys discussing teammates in the solo playlist is probably already getting your blood boiling. And trust me, I'm right there with you. But as you've probably realized, having bad teammates is unavoidable. So what we need to do is focus on understanding our teammates as much as possible so we can somewhat adjust their play style and do our best to play around them. Of course, this is all within reason. We don't want to completely accommodate our random teammates and abandon our normal playstyle either. It's all about having a balance. So what we really want to understand about our teammates is their playstyle, and typically they're going to fall on one of two sides. They will either be a passive player or aggressive player, and we need to look for any clues we can to understand what we can expect from them. The most obvious way is to inspect their loadout. And you know, if you see someone rocking recluse and a shoddy, then chances are they're going to have a much more aggressive play style. On the other hand, if they are rocking a revoker and recluse, since everyone loves recluse, then you know that they are most likely going to be focusing on laning opponents and going for those sniper kills and hanging back a little bit more. Knowing this about our teammates, it allows us to adjust our play style to be more passive or aggressive, but also if we know one of our teammates has a more similar play style to us, then we can intentionally hang with them a little more. So if you're finding yourself in gunfights and your teammates are nowhere to be seen, take a step back and try to understand their play style just a little bit and adjust accordingly. Tip three is kind of a tough one to talk about guys, and the reason is, I'm always a big promoter of team play and should always be doing your best within reason to support your team. But we have to understand that sometimes in the freelance playlist, it's a dog eat dog world out there. And for tip three, it pains me to say, but it's bait your teammates. Now, before I get into this, this is not a tip that's always on that you should always be implementing, but understanding when is the right time to bait them so that we benefit the most from it and it ultimately results in a win for the team. A typical scenario where this would be necessary is when you have teammates that clearly are a little out of their element and maybe reaching the tops of their rank or their potential rank. So what we need to do is just let these team members push first. And the goal is always to keep them alive because when we are baiting, baiting them, it doesn't necessarily mean baiting them to die. It's more to have them draw the initial fire of our enemy so we can be more free to push in and secure some kills. And I know this tip is kind of on the line of good slash bad, but sometimes we got to keep it real here, guys. And that means baiting your teammates occasionally and don't act like you've never done it before. Moving into tip four, and that's to always play your life. We have to be aware of the game mode we are playing here. We are playing survival, meaning there's a limited number of lives and it's all about who runs out of lives first. It's a simple numbers game here, meaning we need to make sure we are always playing our life and conserving our lives as much as possible. What that means is 
Don't challenge an engagement where you are not in a position of strength. When someone has a better angle on you or has already gotten a couple of shots on you, that is the time to pause, recover your health back, and try to disengage. You don't want to be that guy that wastes all your team's lives just because you're striving for a high KD and all you care about is performing well individually. We are playing here to reach 2100 or 5500 and that means we need to win. So if you find yourself wasting a lot of lives, it's time to rethink your approach and try changing up how you're approaching each round because no one wants to be the person weighing down their team. For our last tip guys, it's all about resetting mentally in between games and sometimes this can be easier said than done. Whether that's due to terrible teammates or just how we are playing from game to game and maybe we weren't feeling it on that particular day, it's important to take some time to reset mentally after each game to truly understand one, what is making us frustrated and two, what are we doing in the previous games that wasn't working so well and analyzing that and adjusting for our next game. What this does is helps us from becoming so frustrated and annoyed that begins to negatively impact our performance in game. So whether that's taking an extra minute or two to calm down or playing PVE for 30 minutes or running a couple strikes to take a brief break, make sure you're taking the time to reset mentally if you're starting to tilt because once you start start just freaking out and getting so frustrated that's going to cloud your judgment and it's going to be really hard to think and make decisions clearly because you're going to be so frustrated that's going to do it guys for my five tips to help you guys kill it in the survival freelance playlist if you enjoyed this video make sure you like share and subscribe as it's a free way to support me and i'll catch you guys in the next one Show me what you've got. Tiebreaker active. This is not the end. You look death in these beady eyes and you...